Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to solve a trig function using the TI-84 calculator to help you. So every equation is easier, much easier, if you have a TI-84 at hand. So in this case this equation looks super hard, I chose it for that reason. It looks like something you would not want to solve by hand. So as you can do with any other equation, if you graph the left side in y1 and you graph the right side in y2 and you look at the intersection points, that will help you to find the solution. However, in this case, it's a little bit, there's a little bit more to it because it is a trig function. And so when you're thinking about a trig function, there are a couple things you want to make sure that you're keeping in mind. The first one is you want to make sure that you know if you are in degrees or radians. And in this case, the question is supposed to be in radians. There are um, questions that can potentially be in degrees. Um, and if the question is in degrees, you will probably know, depending on what class you're taking, um, what the teacher says, what the textbook says, uh, you will be informed whether you're in degrees or in radians. Um, okay. So in this case, we are in degrees, I'm mean, sorry, we are in radians. So you want to make sure that your calculator, the mode is also in radians. So you want to go to mode and go down to where it says radians or degrees and press enter to make sure that you are in the correct mode. So now that we are in radians, we are halfway there. All right. So after we check that we are in the right mode, you want to make sure that the window that you're looking at is correct. And again, most questions will tell you what window to use. So this question is actually not there in its entirety. The question actually did say, um, I took it from a textbook and it wanted the solutions between the domain zero. And I won't give official, the official notation here but zero is less than X, which is a less than two pi. So I'm just gonna write 10 words. All right, so you want the solutions between zero and two pi. So on your graph, you are, you're gonna make sure that you're only looking in that window. In order to make sure you're focusing only on that window, go to window and where it says X min, you wanna make sure you're starting off at zero and you want to make sure that your x max is 2 times pi. So 2 times pi. All right, so I think negative 10 to 10 is a good window to take a look at on the y-axis. So we're not going to have anything to graph yet. As you can see, it's empty. But this is the area of the coordinate plane that we'll be focusing on when we are looking for our solutions. All right. So now we can go ahead and graph the left side of our equation in y1 and the right side of our equation in y2. So we have y1, and let's make this smaller so we can see what we're doing here. All right, pull this over a bit. All right, y1 is equal to x tan, and we have x squared, Oops, it didn't have to be like that. Hold on a sec, let's fix that. I doubled up the square. All right, x squared over 10. So, hold on. We have to go there. All right. And make sure everything looks exactly the same. x, 10, x squared over 10. Okay. We're good there and now we can graph the right side in y2 and I'm going to use the other x squared so let's do this it's a little faster minus 6 x plus 1 let's double check that it's the same x squared minus 6 x plus 1 okay so now when we graph it we're going to see the left side is going to be graphed first and then the right side will be graphed next. 
All right, going a little slow, but there we go. All right, so now we have the left side in blue, the right side in red, and we are interested in the intersection points. So our solution is the x values at the intersection points. Why are we only interested in the x values and not the y values? Well, if you take a look at our equation, there is no y in the equation, it's just x. So we want to see where what x is where these two things meet. So in order to find our intersection points, we go to second, trace, and our fifth option is intersect. So we press 5, and when it says first curve, usually it will by default be on the first curve, so just press enter. Then it jumps to the second curve, we just press enter here. And now we have to guess, and we have two points, we actually want them both. But in order to tell the calculator which one we're interested in finding, we can either scroll or type a number that is close to that x value while scroll. Once you're close to that x value, you can enter your guess. And it tells you the intersection point. So our first solution is x equals 0 0.171, approximately. Now we want to find both solutions in the given domain. So we are, are also interested in this x value. So in order to find that x value, we go through the same steps. We press second, trace, option five, which is intersect. First curve, we can just press enter. Second curve, just press enter. And then we can scroll to our other guess or we can actually type an x value that we think is around there, but I'm going to scroll. And once we're close enough to it, we can press enter. We're almost there. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter now. Oops, not plus. Oh, all right, let's hear that. I'm just going to type one, two, three, four, five as my guess. And press enter. And it's telling us our other intersection points, so our second solution is equal to 4.92, approximately. All right, so let's recap. When we're solving a trig equation, we want to first make sure that we are in the right mode. So you want to make sure, depending on your class or your textbook, you're looking at whether or not you should be in radians or degrees. In this case, we were required to be in radians, so we went to mode, switch to radians. We also want to make sure that we are looking only in the required domain. In this case, the question wanted the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So I went to the window and I set my x values, my x min to 0, my x max to 2 pi. Once I had everything set up in the calculator appropriately, I graphed the left side in y1, and the right side in y2 and looked for the x values at the intersection points and I got my two solutions.